Coming to you live from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, and all across the world, psychic, medium, and energetic healer, Sheena Meadow brings you Messages from Spirit. Hi, and welcome to Messages from Spirit, only on Parapod TV. Uh, We're here every Wednesday at 2 o'clock Pacific Time. I'm Sheena Meadow. I'm a psychic medium. I'm an energetic healer. I'm an interfaith minister, and here's what we do every week on the show. I'm a real psychic medium talking to real people, real people just like you that want to ask a question about something psychic or a medium question or a paranormal question, a question about their life path or relationships, and um, they ask real questions, which I love, and then we work to get them real messages from spirit, have a real conversation and hopefully get them real answers and some real healing. That's what we do every week. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, it's so easy. Just send me a text message, 818-437-0886. And if you're outside of the U.S., uh, WhatsApp is the best way to reach me. One, that's my country code, 818-437-0886. Please visit my website, which is SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. And find me everywhere on social media at Sheena Metal. And that's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and X, formerly Twitter. We've got great people on the show today. I'm sure they're going to be great questions. I never know what the questions are until we get here because that's how I like it. I want to be, I want to be surprised. I want to surprise spirit. And I want everything to be as genuine as it possibly can. And I'm so grateful to be here every week and so honored to be a part of Parapod TV on the Roku channel and more. So check that out. Um, here's what we're talking about. I like to talk about a little something before every show starts. And here's what we're talking about today. Um, man, you know, as we get closer to Valentine's Day, and I know Valentine's can be um, an ecstatic holiday for some people, kind of a, a bittersweet holiday for others. But Valentine's Day isn't just about like are you in a romantic relationship? I mean, I know it's, you know, that's how the Hallmark cards sell it, right? But it's, it's not, it's a day about love. And love is many things. Love takes many forms. Love means a lot to a lot of people and it can mean a lot of different things. Love is for your friends. Love is for your family. Love is for your animal companions, children, animal children. Uh, Love is for your kids and your parents and your siblings. Um, Love is for what you do in the world. Love is for the world. Love is for the universe. Love is for God. There's so many different things to love. Loving your spirit guides. Uh, Loving all the angels. Love can mean many things and we need to remember that. So as Valentine's Day approaches and we think about Cupid with his little bow and arrow, It isn't just a holiday for people in a relationship or wanting to get in a relationship. It's a time for you to sit and assess the importance of love. And love is really all there is. Um, Love is all you need, as the Beatles said, right? And that's so true. Love is a, it's a fuel, right? It's a force that energizes us and activates us and exalts us, makes us happy to be on the earth, confirms our reason for living. Love is great. So uh, my best friend, I'm I'm often with her on Valentine's Day. Um, She does a thing called the red dinner where all the food is red. And she always puts little Valentine's party favors on all our places and, um, so for her family, Valentine's Day was a family holiday. Her parents, it was that was a time for, for family. So that's how she still is. It's, it's a time for family. I, I kind of love that. Now, do I also like to spend Valentine's Day in a romantic way? 100%. But you have to remember that Valentine's Day means a lot of things. When I was a kid, my mom always gave me Valentine's stuff. I always got a big heart full of candy. 
and uh, and stuffed animals and toys, Valentine's stuffed animals. And I loved all of that. Um, it never occurred to me as I got older and got into romantic relationships that Valentine's Day with my mom was any less significant than Valentine's Day with my partners. There are many kinds of love. And we need to remember how important they all are and how important it is for all of us to have many kinds of love in our life and not feel like, okay, if I'm not in a relationship, then I'm stupid, I'm not worthy, and Valentine's Day is ridiculous. No, it's it's not like that. And people say, oh, I hate Valentine's Day. It's, companies have just commercialized love. <laughs> well, you can say the same thing about Christmas. I guess people do. You could say the same thing about any holiday. You could say the 4th of July is a commercial for the United States. You could look at every holiday as a bad thing, or you could look at it as a good thing. So take this Valentine's Day and start thinking about love. As a matter of fact, we're not doing a show on Valentine's Day. Um, we're doing a show, we're pre-taping our Valentine's show the night before because I was surprised, you know, my wonderful producer, uh, Emery and I were thinking, well, what are we going to do? And we uh, we were leaving it open and everybody didn't want to do Valentine's Day because they were doing something, not necessarily with partners, but something. And I love that. So we pre-tape it. Let people enjoy their holiday. Have fun. Love yourself. That's the greatest love of all, right? Love yourself this Valentine's Day. All right. Something to think about as we're getting close to approaching February, the month of love, which starts tomorrow. Uh, let's do a message from spirit. I would love that. Hi. Hi, I'm Sandra. I'm from Bakersfield, California. Hi, sweetheart. And Hi. what's your question for me? It's great to see you. Good to, good to see you too. Um, I have a big surgery coming up and I just have a question if you have any insight, whether that surgery is going to be here in my hometown or elsewhere. It's kind of something that I'm pondering like where I should have this procedure. It's, I'm very worried because it is a big procedure. So just anything to put my mind at ease is. Honey, it looks like it's going to be there. It looks like it's going to be there with a, a doctor surgeon that you already have talked to. Okay. Is that right? I have talked to somebody. I had some hesitations because it's a big surgery and getting a second opinion and the worry of having it elsewhere financially, all that kind of stuff is, is there. So I was just wondering, you know, am I choosing you know the right path? You know, am I, I going the right I, way? You're not sure of the doctor get a second doctor opinion, but I don't see you having it outside of Bakersfield. So it should be the pretty straightforward as far as the procedure. Yeah. I okay. Think it's been pretty easy. Okay. I know you're worried and I know you're concerned, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be okay. I mean, I think it's it's going to be fine just where it is. And you're okay. going to be a lot more comfortable recuperating there. Very true. <laughs> Very it also true. looks like the recuperation is not going to be as, I want to say terrible. Is that an okay word? That they have sort of led you to believe. You're Make getting sure a lot of true. worst case scenarios, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The treatment's pretty harsh right now. So I'm, I'm hoping that we're getting there it's making a difference again nobody really is telling me where we're at because we don't have any updated information but i'm currently in treatment so i'm hoping that it is making a difference in my body that it will make it easier for surgery i agree i agree it's going to be much easier for surgery sweetheart and you're really going to be okay um i would just stay where you are okay okay it, thank I you said, i said if you don't like your doctor sweetie Get another opinion and see if there's somebody you resonate better with. But I don't see there's a problem with the location. Okay. Thank you, you so much. You need to be close to home. Okay, sweetie? Thank All you. Right. All, right. All right. Keep believing, honey. And I'm, I'm going to send you some love. And everybody who's watching, um, let's go ahead and make sure we, that we send Sandra some love. Okay? Thank you. You take care of you, sweetheart. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. It's scary when you're facing a surgery and you don't know who's right, who's the right person, what's the right thing. Um, should I go someplace else? I know you hear stories, people go someplace else and get their surgeries. Should you do that? I just think um, if you can stay where you feel the safest, 
then that then that's where you should stay. If that's a possibility, then that's what you should do. And and I think that's because the surgery is not just about the surgery. It's also about the recovery time. It's about um, it's about a lot of things. It's about how you feel uh, going in. Do you feel comfortable in the hospital? Do you feel comfortable with the doctor? That that aids to a lot of your recovery. It says a lot to your recovery. So anyway, um, yes. All right, sweetheart. I wish you the best. All right. Um, and I wish everybody the best who's facing a medical thing right now. Every one of you. Um, we're so lucky that it's, we live in the time we live in. My mom had a colon surgery in, um, I don't know why I bring up colons, but my mom had a colon surgery in 1990, 91, 92, right around there. And my friend, I have a friend that just had one. That's why I'm thinking about it. Uh, basically the same surgery. And um, at the time she couldn't eat for a week before she couldn't eat for two weeks after she had to have one of those, um, you know, tubes in her nose to pump the bile out. It was probably the most grueling surgery she ever had. They had him, he was eating the next day. They had him up and walking. He only had to fast the day before. Um, he was out of the hospital in a couple of days. It's amazing just how technology has changed in that 30 years. Everything is so much easier than it was. So keep that in mind and keep the faith that medical technology has gotten unbelievable and we're all in such good hands. Um, okay. Everything's going to be, everything's going to be good. All right. All right. Sending you so much love, sweetheart. Let's do another message from spirit. I would love that. Hello. Hi. How are you? All right. My name's Lane. I'm from Florida. Beautiful. And, uh, where are you in Florida? Jacksonville. Oh, nice. Okay, great. Just sneak it into Florida. Just over the... <laughs> Over the Georgia line there, going on into Florida. That's beautiful. Oh, man, right there on the water, got to be. That's gorgeous. It's gorgeous there. Uh, what's your question for me today, sweetheart? Oh, man. All right, I'm going to knuckle it down. Let's see. Oh, you got a lot. I got four off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Am I destined to be a lone wolf? It just seems to be a thing with my family. If that, I mean, it's not the most important thing, you but I'm like, not a spring chicken. <laughs> you mean like not ever in a relationship? Is that what you mean? Nothing solid. No. If that makes sense. No. That's not what you want, is it? Do you want It'd that? be nice to build a life with someone. I was going to say, it's, I, that's what I meant. You don't want to just prowl around the rest oh, of your life. Oh, no. I I need something solid, significant, soul yeah. nurturing. Yeah, you you need that. Well, there's some members of your family honestly don't want that. I mean, they're happy to be prowlers. Yeah, family's most important. You got some prowlers in that family. <laughs> it just no. seems like things never work out. No, it's just you know what? It's just the it's the wrong people. You you I'm just set, on that one. <laughs> you set the intention for the wrong people. And this is going to sound so cliche and so ridiculous, but here I go. You have to fall in love with you, right? You're right. Because you have kind of a eh, opinion of yourself, so you're drawing people who have the same opinion of you, and it's very common. A lot of us do it. It's a thing, um, but you have to make sure that you take stock in your own value, sweetheart, and all the wonderful things about you so that you can attract to you people who feel the same about you. Um, it's almost like you're, you're like bleeding out in the water and the sharks are coming, right? Oh, yes. So you had so yes. many relationships with, you know, what is that? Sharks, snakes, serpents, and, and you know what I mean? It's a lot. Yes. Um, and, and it's time to it's time to sort of break that pattern and and really learn to love yourself. Let's take this time now while you're alone mm -hmm. to really learn to love yourself um, so that then you can draw somebody to you 
who understands that love that you have for you and, and mirrors it to you, you know? And, and you have to, and I think part of that is popping out of this mindset of like my whole family, <laughs> we just live on the edge. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know what each other during mating season, and the, you know what I mean. That's not. That's not good. Oh man! No, you are destined to be in something really beautiful that lasts for the rest of your life. That's also super, super casual, and I don't mean that in that it's not a serious relationship, but that it's not some kind of heavy, all-encompassing. Um, you know, we can't go anywhere without each other. I don't right. think that's something that would make you happy. You need your freedom mm -hmm. and you need your, your independence to be with your friends and do your own thing and basically do whatever the hell you want when you want to do it. So yeah. you need to be with somebody who's also very involved in their own life so that they understand that they got their own stuff to do. You're, you would not do well with a clinger. You're just too independent. So that's why you have to draw to you the mirror of who you are so you're getting back the kind of love that you want to give. Right. And, um, but definitely somebody who knows how to commit and be emotionally present more than anybody you've ever been with. Does that make sense? Yes. That's what you really yes. need, sweetheart. And it's going to be so great. And I'm so happy for you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care, sweetheart. I'm here when you need me. Thank you. You bet. Take care. What a great post for our pre-Valentine show. How great was that? Um, that's awesome. What a great person. We're not meant to be alone. No one's meant to be alone. We think we are. I think it's a good attitude to have. I think it's a good attitude to have when we are alone. To say, well, you know, if somebody doesn't come along, I got me. I got friends. I got family. I got my, my animal pets, companions. I'm good. Um, sometimes my little guy, Colin, my cat, when he comes up and hugs me in the morning, sometimes we're just like, I'll say to him, you know what? If all we have is us, we're going to be okay. And he just looks at me like, I don't only know you. <laughs> You're the only human I have. Um, but, you know, it's just like, it's it just so he, it, but that doesn't mean that that's how it's going to be. But you have to be in love with yourself enough that if that's the end scenario, you're okay with that. Because ultimately we come into this world alone and we leave alone. Now we come into this world with soul family waiting for us. And, and, and also earthbound family waiting for us. And we leave with loved ones waiting for us on the other side. But ultimately our, our job is our, our thing is our journey is us, right? It's your soul journey, your life path. It's you, it's us, one. And you got to be good with you. You've got to be okay with that. That's got to sit well with you. You know? Super important. All right. Uh, let's do another message. Oh, really quick, before we do, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, send me a text message, 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. All right. Uh, let's do another uh, another message from Spirit. Hi. Hi. Hey, Sheena. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Uh, who are you and where are you coming in from, sweetie? I'm Sessa. i from Nashville. Beautiful. How's Nashville today? How's your weather? Uh, the weather's nice. That's nice. Yeah. It's sunny here for the first time in like a month. I thought for a minute I wasn't in Southern California anymore. <laughs> yeah. What's your question for me, darling? Uh, finances. Work life. Okay. Finances and what, sweetie? Work life. Okay. Are you? You're not feeling the, the work thing is not. It's not filling your soul. Is that is that right? 
Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Um, are you looking for something that do you? First of all, this is gonna. This may sound crazy, but do you know what it is you really want to do? Because I feel like you're a little lost with that. Uh, I think I might have lost track a little bit. Yeah, lost the plot and work a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think that you've spent a lot of time. Honestly, working jobs you didn't like. Doing things that were just kind of a paycheck, right? Showing up. Yeah. But not really finding something that feeds your soul. Is that right? Mm hmm You need something that feeds your soul. And when you find that, It's going to fix the finance problem. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? What do you, um, do you know what you really want to do, sweetie? Let's start with that. What is it that you really want to do? I think I got to do some more digging and see what that is exactly. Yeah. I know yeah. it's in like service, but. What exactly? Yeah. Yeah, it is, right? It's in service, right? Mm -hmm. Being in service of others. And and somewhere where you can really um you can really touch people. You need you need to be in a place where you're really touching people. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean necessarily physically touching them. Right, right, right. But definitely emotionally and spiritually touching them. Um, have you thought about something in the medical profession? Um, I did a couple of years ago. It's working in that field. Yeah. How did you feel about that? I mean, I enjoyed it, but at the time the pay wasn't all that great. So I kind of ended up coming out of it in a sense. So if I was to go back, I would have to start all the way over as far as like schooling is concerned. Yeah. Well, you've already got some schooling behind you, right? So you'd have to pick it up where you left off. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing like a really good, I'm seeing a really good positive thing for you in the medical profession. It doesn't mean that you have to be a nurse um, you could work, you know, an, an administrative or you could work as an assistant or something. But I do see you going in that direction. Does that sound awful to you or does that sound OK? That sounds pretty good. OK. Yeah, considering what I'm doing now. OK. OK. What are you doing now? I work at a hotel. Yeah, that's not so fun, huh? <laughs> I mean, it could be if you decided to go into management. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think you should just, sweetie, this is what you need to do. Please do this for me. Spend some time in the month of love, February, okay. falling in love with yourself as a career person and figuring out just what you want to do. Okay. And what service means to you? Because, yes, helping people is the service industry. Being in a hotel is a service industry. But but what about, like, actually, actually helping people's lives? Yeah. I think you'd be so good at that. You've got such a beauty and a warmth in you, sweetie, and the world needs you. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Okay. All right. Take care, darling. So good All right, to talk thank you. to you. All right. You know, there's some of us that we're just sort of, um, we're just sort of marked <laughs> to work in service. We're just service people. That's who we are. And we are meant to be in service. Um, so it's not always the easiest plight in life. It's hard to be a person of service. Um, I think sometimes it'd be easy just for me to sit at a hotel and check people in all day long. Oh, sometimes I think it would be easy to sit in an office and just punch a clock. But it's not who I am. 
and it's not something that I would be good at. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, you have to find what you want to do. And she's going to find it. We're all going to find it, right? So if you're sitting home right now and you're like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I don't understand anything. You're going to get there. Okay? I have all the faith in the world in you. And there is nothing more beautiful than finding out who you are and finding out what career you belong in. Because it's not just a career to make money, although that's important and we need that. But it's also what you do. It's what you contribute to the world. It's the little cog that you are in the giant machine that is the universe. What are you doing right now to make the world a better place? And she's going to find that because she's beautiful. And beautiful people always find their way. And I know if you're home watching and you're like, I don't know who I am or what I'm doing. You're going to find it. All right. I have faith in you. All right. Let's do another message from Spirit. I'm getting excited now. Hi. Hi, Sheena. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm Olivia. I'm from Spokane, Washington. And my question for you yes. is what should I do this year to grow my real estate business? Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, from a spiritual perspective, meditate and then manifest. Are you? I love it. Okay. Okay. So meditate to get yourself in the right place and ask spirit to deliver to you the right messages that you need for your business and, and in order, right? Because sometimes if we don't ask for, you want a step-by-step -step help account, Spirit will throw you everything you're supposed to do for the next five years. And then you're like, right. what, what do I do with all of this? And where do I start? So say, I just want to know the, the starting steps right now. Can you just send okay. me the starting steps? And then I want you to envision your career and think about all the things that you want. Even find listings that you would like to handle and homes you'd like to sell. And then okay. envision yourself selling that house. I do that all the time. So that's Good. crazy. You mentioned that. Okay. Manifestation is awesome. And I mean, I manifest things all the time and I know people probably think I'm crazy, but I will, I'll think of something that I really want. And then I'll, and I will ask spirit to send me the steps for how to get there. I love it. That's, that's so tangible too. And they do, they send me the steps for how to get there. And that is such a beautiful thing. So manifestation and meditation from a spiritual perspective and also belief in you, you know, okay. believe that you can do it. Envision yourself with what you want and don't beat yourself up when it doesn't happen right away. Because mm -hmm. I remember I always tell my clients, the universe doesn't give a damn about your timeline. Right. It's all spirits <laughs> timeline. I would say on an earthbound perspective, say yes to everything. Okay. Just keep saying yes. Just keep following up. Um, don't let yourself lose hope or sink down to that. What am I doing? This is crazy. This is never going to happen. Don't let yourself go there. You have everything in you and spirit wants you to have this successful business and do this thing that you've always wanted to do. And you have a right to have that. So don't let anybody tell you, you don't have a right to have that. Oh, that's so special to me. Thank you. And especially don't let you tell you that you don't have a right to have that. Mm-hmm. Because you do. What are some of the doubts that you're having? What What's some of the stuff that's going on? Um, we have just come out of a really difficult market. Interest rates were as high as they've been in the past 30 years. And yeah. I had just started my career. So I actually feel really thankful that I'm one of the people that made it through and just worked really hard. And like you said, said yes to everything and pivoted when I needed to. Um, but it's like, oh my gosh, the past two years were so hard. It's, it's difficult to now get into the mindset of like this, everything's going to be okay. You made it this far. You can do it. Right. So it's just like all of this stuff that was in my mind the past two years, it's like cleaning that out and taking yeah. the trash out now. It's yes. hard. Well, and, and remember this because people like to scare you with everything bad that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, 
people sell houses during lousy markets. Mm -hmm. People buy houses during lousy markets. People buy houses when interest rates are insane. And people buy houses when interest rates are fantastic. And people mm -hmm. buy houses when homes are at their low. And people buy houses when homes are at their high. It amazes me sometimes because I live in a very, um, a very, uh, um, uh, an, an area of Southern California that a lot of people want to live in at the beach. Yeah. And I laugh sometimes when people are like, oh, nobody's buying any homes right now. There's like a waiting list for right. homes in my neighborhood. So right. this whole idea that people only, only, only when they only, it's just not, it's just something people like to say to drag everybody down. And you have to okay. not believe that. You have to say, hey, get what? guess what? There's a, a set of people that will probably only buy when homes are at their low. But then there's these other people, they don't give a damn about money. They'll buy a house for a, you know, they'll buy a house for $10 million on an iceberg. So yeah. <laughs> you have to remember there are different people. And then there are people that just have to move. They have to find right. something. They get relocated for work and they got to get it, whether it's up or down, they got to get it right then. So there's always going to be people needing and wanting to buy and sell homes. And you can't sort of play into that in every industry, right? In every industry, there's, there's, oh, the doom gloom people right now. It's not a good time. Yeah. The market's going to yeah. crash, whatever, right. whatever they want to say that day better do it now because people say that to me sometimes like, oh, you know, the homes are at their high. Now's the time to sell. My family's owned this home for 43 years, but now's yeah. the time to sell as if like, it's the only time. And if yeah. I don't sell the house right now, I'll <laughs> never get rid of it. I mean, the thing just escalates in value. So right. overall, with very few exceptions, everything in the country is overall escalating in value. So things are only yeah. getting better. Um, you just have to, you know, even, even places like Detroit that were dead, the housing right. market has come back. Mm -hmm. It always comes back. It's America. Mm -hmm. So um, just don't let all the naysayers get at you with this. Okay. You, can't, you can't, it's your dream. Nobody yeah, can it stop is. you from <laughs> your dream. Nobody can take your dream away from you. And when there are times that are slow, months that are slow, I have months that are slow. All right. It happens. I mean, you can't, Allow yourself to panic every time it happens because, yeah, you know, when you're dealing with something somebody has to save up money for, somebody has to use their extra savings income for, it's just a matter of when. So you just have to be patient and believe right. in yourself that you can do it and believe in yourself that you're great and I will. not allow yourself <laughs> to get worried, you know? And meanwhile, like I said, open up some of those listings. Look at things, okay. drive through neighborhoods and think, okay, I want to, I want to sell three houses in this neighborhood and like just my start thing to do. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and just start, start knowing where you are, knowing what you love and what, where your area is and make, make an energetic relationship with those homes because okay. homes are like little people. They all have their own energy. Yeah. yeah and, they totally um, do. You it, find the ones that want to be a part of your life. And think to yourself, when, when something goes on the market in th on this street, it's going to be mine. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> okay. And, and I love like it. Said, learn about the area so that when people are looking for something, you know every single thing about every street, every school district, what the police and fire are like, you know, what the temperatures are like, who has pools, like who has okay. what, it's all that stuff. Because, um, it's, it's, it, people want to know that you really love the area yeah, and that things aren't just listings to you. Right. Okay. And you're going to be great. You're an empath. Use your empathic ability to yeah. spread some <laughs> love across your city. You know, will do. Will right, do. Take care. Thanks for the Thank great question. You. It's another thing you can love. You can love your home. That's a Cupid thing. Love your home. Love your street. Love your neighborhood. Love your city. Love your state. Love your country, love the earth. Um, I love all that stuff. You got to love all that stuff. Uh, that's a really important thing, too, when we're talking about love and we're talking about, um, you know, this, this wonderful, 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 wonderful uh, Cupid month.
the month of the Cupid. It's really important. Um, yeah, it's got to be more. So I, my mom had a friend who I would, I would guess is in her eighties. Am I allowed to say that? And, um, she's still selling homes. When I was a kid and we moved to this neighborhood, I was 13. She was the biggest real estate agent. She sold all the homes in this neighborhood because this neighborhood was relatively new. It was only six years old when we got here and she lived in this neighborhood. She lived behind us. That's how my mom met her. She is still out there with the swanky office. Now she's got a partner that's like, you know, half her age. Um, and they sell together and she still has a ton of listings and, oh yeah, I sold three houses on your street last week. Like, and, but she knows the area and she loves the area and she's a personable person and that's what you have to be. And that's fun, right? If you're going to do real estate, you got to be nice. Um, if you've got to do anything in the service industry, you have to be nice, even when you don't feel like being nice. I mean, when people text me and ask me questions and, oh my goodness, a lot of people text me and ask me this and that, those people might never, ever, ever book a private session with me, but I'm nice and I'm loving and I answer whatever they have and I talk to them and I send them hearts and love when they're not feeling good um, because that's, that's how it is. If I just said like, you know, oh, you know, screw you, don't text me unless you're going to pay for a reading. I probably wouldn't have the following that I have now in the same way. If you're a real estate agent and you only want to answer questions, if people are serious buyers. Well, you don't know who's going to be the serious buyer tomorrow. So you got to show the love, you know, it's so important. Um, something to think about. All right, let's do another message from spirit. Remember, if you want to be a guest on the show, send me a text message, 818 818- Four three seven zero eight eight six. That's eight one eight four three seven zero eight eight six. All right, here we go. Hi, hi. My name is Lois, and I'm from Casa Grande, Arizona. And Beautiful. my question is um, for Spirit about my physical body. Am should I be expecting more healing, or should I learn to love it like it is? Oh. Um, Well, both. More healing will come, but you also have to love it in every stage of its healing, Lois. Okay. Because it's beautiful. And you should be thankful to have the healing that you have. I know there's healing that you want that hasn't happened yet, but you got to love it every inch of the way. It's like when you go on a diet, right? You want to lose 100 pounds, you lose five. You have to love yourself at that five pound weight. Okay. And then love yourself when you lose another 10 pounds. Just what, love what it is, where it is. Love is where it is. Acceptance okay. is where it is. What okay. is it about your body? Do you think, sweetie, that you're having a hard time oh. loving it where it's at? Um, A few years ago, I ended up with a secondary condition in my arm mm-hmm. that it's called CRPS. It's worth okay. a Google. Okay. Um, It uh, has changed my abilities almost like 180 degrees. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to live with it. It's, um, it's an incredible challenge, but it's much better than it used to be. It just hasn't improved for a couple of years. So okay. I was hoping that there was more coming because I'm, I'm not sure where to go from here, you know, um, as far as, you know, my pipeline for financial security and things like that. So Having it healed more would open up the scope of what's possible a lot more. So, uh, well, no, that's not true. I call bullshit on myself. It opens up what I can do to that end, not necessarily what's possible because spirit can do anything. Right, right, exactly, yes. Spirit can do anything. And also, how many alternative modalities have you tried? Like, have you done biofeedback or acupuncture or? Biofeedback, acupuncture, mirroring, um, injections, physical therapy. But I'm willing to do it all again. Here's the physical therapy happening. Um, Somebody just was a guest on my show yesterday. 
and she was telling me about a a a, a new treatment. Um, I'm going to ask her about it. Um, I'm asking her right now. I'm texting oh, her. Um, thank you. That's so um, nice. That that is supposed to be great. It goes in and it it works on everything, and it highly oxygenates your body. And people are going in there if they're having problems with like liver, kidney, heart, immunity, yeah. a, a certain appendage, and it's supposed to help bring life to things. That would be fabulous. Um. Uh, but I couldn't understand yesterday what what she actually said it was. So let's text her and see if she texts me right back. If not, I will text you later uh, you so with, with the info on it. Because there's always some new thing coming. Yes. And I think you should keep the acupuncture up. And also, have you done ac acupressure with the meridian points? Yes. Okay, good. You're good. Yeah. You've really followed up on stuff. Wow. Well, it's been a few years. I've had time. Well, and that's also <laughs> why it's gotten better. Because yes. it's, it's gotten better because you've tried the different things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll keep trying done, then. Have That's you done energetic? Have you done energetic healing? Have you had an energetic? I have not. Reiki was my next thing to give it a go. Okay. Um, or even just an energetic cleanse. Okay. I find that okay. I do so many of those a week, and it helps so many people. Sometimes okay. it's just getting your chakras balanced and the toxicity pulled out of your system. I know that sounds really foreboding no. when I say it like that, but we all uh -huh. we all build up toxicity. It's like. It's like with the commercials where they're like, gut bacteria. Like, we all have <laughs> gut bacteria. It's just how much do you have? You know, but everybody could use to, you know, drink some lemon juice and get rid of that in the same way everybody could use an energetic cleanse to balance everything out. Great. I, I will text you to schedule that. Right, Thank you good. so much. You take care of you. And I'm going to find out about this treatment from my friend. Wonderful. Like, That's so wonderful. Thank you right. so much. Take care, sweetheart. All right. Thank you. You betcha. Bye-bye there's always a potential for us to get better. We always have that. You know, we always have that. And it's just a matter of finding the right thing that then brings you more healing. But it's so possible. Okay. And I want you to have faith and I want you to believe and I want you all to know that healing is possible. Even though sometimes doctors tell you it's not. There are all, I always tell the story, two stories I always tell. Um, one is I had a friend maybe 20 years ago that was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. And they basically told her to go home and get her affairs in order. And her mom was like, no, 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 we're taking you to Europe. And they went to Germany and she had all these alternative treatments that included uh, alkalinity treatment with water and biofeedback and all these different things. And she went into remission and she's still alive. I have another friend who had stage four bone cancer maybe nine years ago, and they told her she had two and a half months. And um, she's still kicking. She's still with us and still doing everything she did. So sometimes when doctors say there's nothing else to do, there's no more help, you're, nothing's going to happen, you know, you're not going to walk, you're not going to get this, they, they don't know because they don't understand the power of everything that we go through. They don't understand. They understand the physical. They understand the odds. They understand the percentages of who gets better and blah, blah, blah. What they don't understand is they don't understand how the spirit works everything the mind can do, everything the soul can do, everything the heart can do, what spirit can come in and do for you, spirit, God, energy. They don't understand the power of every kind of healing. Okay? So keep the faith. All right? You're going to be okay. All right, let's do a message from spirit. 
Hello, Sheena. Hi, how are you, sweetheart? Who are you and where are you coming in from? Uh, my name's Heather. I'm from Branson, Missouri. Oh, great. Wonderful. I think you're our first one ever from Branson. That's neat. What a fun place that must be to live. I've lived here for over 30 years. It's definitely what? interesting. <laughs> it's, it's grown, right? It's growing all the time. For sure. All the it's time. A, it's yes, hard not to go to a show every night because I think I would want to go to a show every night. <laughs> When you've worked around the tourist industry as long as I have, it's no big deal anymore. <laughs> I say that, and I live in Southern California, and I almost never go to shows. So <laughs> yeah, see. <laughs> but if I was in Branson, damn it, I'd go to a show every night. So, um, <laughs> what's your question for me, sweetie? So um, a couple of months ago, my brother died. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, sweetie. He had um, special needs, and I think it was very unexpected. Um, none of us thought that he was going to go. Everybody expected him to go home. Yes. And I've always lived in Missouri. My whole family lives in Ohio. And the okay. day he passed, um, he just my mom called me from his hospital room, mm. and he was in so much pain. He just yelled for me over and over again. He just kept saying my name, and he just kept saying, come. And I couldn't. And so all I could do was just tell him I loved him and I was be there as soon as I could. He died later that night. Um, so my question to you is, does he know that I wanted to be there? Does he feel like I abandoned absolutely. him? Absolutely. No, absolutely no. Um, when he was asking for help, it wasn't necessarily from you. It was mostly from spirit. Like he just wanted someone to help take him to the next place and take his body out of distress. Because it seems like he was in some pain. Yeah, he was pretty out of his mind. With and it. he just wanted someone to come and rescue him and take him to a place where there wasn't any pain. And you know what the best news is? Somebody did. Oh, good. And so, that no, he is not question. upset with you that it wasn't you. He's so thankful for all the love that you gave him all that time, sweetie. He's so thankful to you for that love. And he thinks so, you're such a rock star. And he uh, that he's with my grandparents. Is yes. he happy now? Yes, he's so happy. And he's so thankful that he wasn't alone on this earth because he keeps talking about how he just could have been alone, but he wasn't. And that was because of you, you know, you made him feel like everything was going to be okay. And that's really beautiful. Thank All you. right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. You take care. All right. He's sending you love. And so am I, sweetheart. Thank you. Have a good night. You Bye. too, sweetheart. Wow. So they care. They care that we love them when they pass. It matters to them how much we love them. It's important. All right. Let's do another message from spirit before I cry. Hi. Hi, Machina. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Who are you? I'm are you so good. From, Thank darling? you. What's um, your name and where are you from? My name is Christina and I am from New Jersey. Beautiful. What's your question, darling? <sighs> My question is, um, I have a thyroid condition. Okay. Is taking the holistic approach, because they didn't offer me medication, so let's put that out there. They did not offer me medication. Um. So I began to treat myself at home. Is that helping or should I go back to the endocrinologist? What did they give you? Um, they, uh, the woman that I seen first told me I had cancer. Um, mm -hmm. She was mistaken because I, they did a double biopsy and. I don't see that. Yeah. Everything came back fine. Yeah. Um, they suggested I could have it removed, um, but it wasn't necessary, but I could if I wanted to, and okay. I chose not to. Good. Um, but I'm still, um, your thyroid function produces a multitude of different hormones, and yeah. I'm still up and down and up and down, and I'm not, and my weight is one of the things that's along with the hormones, so. Yeah, yes, yes. 
Yeah, I just didn't too, know what to do. Too low, it really gives you the weight, right? If you have, if you're hypothyroid. Yes, yes, it does. Um, and they gave you medication to regulate it? No, they did not. They gave me no medication. Yeah, I would go see the endocrinologist, and also um, okay. think about seeing a homeopath because there's wonderful um, uh, natural remedies now for thyroid that are working terrific. Will do. I don't know and that I've, there's many where I am, but I will look into it. Well, you might be able to find one online. Okay. A lot of them do online appointments now and they can let you know what supplement you need. Um, and when you go see the, um, the endocrinologist say, I'd also like to try some, some homeopathic remedies to supplement this. Okay. And my theory is any doctor that tells you homeopathic is bad is a doctor you don't want to see. Amen. I agree. I stopped, I stopped seeing a cardiologist once because he told me there was no proof that any supplement had ever helped anyone. And I was like, oh, okay, bye. And I never went back. Hogwash. <laughs> because, I don't want to hear that. You know, so a good doctor knows it's a mixture of Eastern and Western. And with thyroid, that seems to really be the trick only because the thyroid meds can be harsh. I know not, a not few people. They don't, they don't have bad like symptoms, the medicines, but sometimes they push you too far this way. And then the other one pushes you too far this way. And sometimes the homeopathic stuff can balance you out. Absolutely. I agree. But I definitely think you need to be on a medication for the hypothyroidism. I appreciate that. And I thank you for bringing that to me because I, it, it's been a big concern, especially having little children. I'm always yes. concerned. You're going to be fine. It's okay. Thank you for being here, sweetie. Everything's going to be okay. Thank you for having me, Machina. Have a blessed evening. You too, honey. Take care. All right. Bye-bye now. What a beautiful show and beautiful people and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm so happy. It was great. If you want to book a private session or get to know me better or learn about what I do or um, have a new friend in me, 818-437-0886. And also, um, that's my, my cell. It's this phone. Text me. It's just sitting here waiting to be texted. Um, and then uh, also my website, please get to know me better. 818-4, oh, that's my cell again. 437-0886. SheenaMetalSpiritual.com is the website. And find me everywhere on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, and X, formerly Twitter. I'm just at Sheena Metal. Um, until I see you next time, every Tuesday, Wednesday, we're here, two o'clock Pacific time, Parapod TV. Uh, thank you to Parapod TV for allowing us to be a part of your wonderful spiritual and paranormal lineup. Thank you to Tony Sweet, the beautiful Tony Sweet, who owns Parapod TV and its sister station, UBN Go. Thank you so much to... Um, my amazing engineer and producer, Emery, you are the wind beneath my wings. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Oh, it's Wednesday. What is with the Tuesday in me? Next Wednesday at 2 o'clock Pacific time. Um, right here at Parapod TV. Here's what you can do for me till I see you next time. Seek peace. Live in love. Lead with kindness. Embrace unity always work to raise your vibration and the vibration of those around you and the vibration of the everything. And most importantly, know that you, you are love and you are loved and you're loved by me. I'm Sheena. This is Messages from Spirit. Till I see you next week, stay beautiful. I'll see you soon. Take care of you. Choose you. Thank mm -hmm. you.